Hello, I'm back. Just again, quick apologies on the noise. I live literally like next to a freeway. I'm a minute within walking distance to the freeway. So, um, any hooting, any loud cars that pass by, I cannot avoid that. I have not soundproofed this room. I have no intention of soundproofing this room as yet. Um, but that's not something that needs to be discussed at this point. This is what I'm looking at right now. So someone um, in one of the groups that I'm in uh, looked at an article on Sunlam and I do believe that there is a bit of a mistake here. That a lot of people are treating the investment as a trade. So people are trying to trade stocks using uh, easy equities. And the danger with that is that there is no... Um, I really should probably just mute this. Uh, the danger in that is that there is no. Let's see if I can reduce the speaker sound there, so we don't have all of that. <coughs> Excuse me. So the danger in that is that there is no leverage. So uh, the, we'll get to leverage another day. But long story short, it, it's going to cost quite a bit to try and jump in and out doing short-term trades using uh, this type of brokerage. You want to make it more of a long-term play, but that's not why I'm here. I'm looking into Sunlam. I saw an article in Sunlam. Um, and again, the article should not have enticed you to buy because, and maybe I should just quickly go through this. We have what are called journalists. We all know what journalists are. But then we've got journalists within fields. So you've got journalists within sports. You've got, as we know, in soccer, etc. Then we've got journalists in finance or in the markets. And those people are generally those that who are, who are dressed well. And they talk a lot, right? They, they, they tell you about a stock. But a lot of the time, what they're actually doing is they're reporting back on an event that affected the stock. So just like on CNBC. So anyone who, who's actually in investments and in finance doesn't take the advice of CNBC. What they do instead is they watch CNBC to find out if there's any news that has affected their stock. So they use it as a news channel, not as a financial advisory type of channel. Same thing happens with um, when you're reading articles. Is you shouldn't take the articles as an enticement, or in other words, you shouldn't take them as a clue to say this is the right time to buy. What you should be doing is you should be looking at the fundamentals of that company and what's been going on in the finance, financials, etc. And then you buy off that. Now, articles create volatility. So if there's good news, the stock will jump up, but that's also why you'll find that it'll jump up and then it'll pull back because it was just for that, for that time being. So I'm looking at Sunlam because someone posted a, a an article looking at Sunlam basically saying they they expecting some good things to happen. And I've mentioned this in a video before where I said it's important to also realize that anyone who, who speaks or is a spokesperson of a company is always going to try and create confidence within the company. So you can't buy based on articles. But... Now let's actually look at Sunlam as a company. <coughs> I did a bit of research on it, just a bit. No, I didn't jump in that much. Um, we need to be able to give you some homework. So there's a lot to do when you look into Sunlam. But long story short, so Sunlam was doing relatively well, in fact, up until around end of last year. Okay, so up until around the end of last year, and then really, as of this year, things just dropped um, horribly. Now, I'm not going to read all of this, but long story short, and this is important for a future video that I'm working on. Sunlam is an insurance company. That's basically what they do. They do life, they do long-term insurance. Basically, that's what they do. So, that covers your retirement annuities or life covers, um, investments, wealth management, all of those long-term things are under Sunlam, okay? Um, and I was doing a bit of research. I don't know if it's there. I think it is, but long story short, Sunlam is massive. Uh, you can obviously read this because 
people have these equities. So it is massive. Um, and yeah, for now, it's about 57 bucks roughly. So at the time of the recording, it was about 57 bucks. But let me just quick move, quickly move on because I don't intend on sitting up for two hours speaking. Just to give you an idea of how big Sunlam is, these are the subsidiaries. In other words, these are the sub companies or companies that Sunlam owns. Um, they, Sunlam, which is the biggest short term insurance company, Sunlam owns 57% of Sunlam. Now, quick note Sunlam is older. Sunlam is older. But at some point on the line, Sunlam outgrew Sunlam, probably bought in. And someone, uh, there was a question that basically said, so why doesn't Sunlam just hold um, outright by Sunlam? And the answer was basically that it would cost too much and it wouldn't be worth it. So I suppose there's premiums involved and when you're trying to figure out whether it makes sense, it doesn't really make sense. So, um, but the own Sunlam, the biggest now, bear in mind, Sunlam alone, has a lot of companies underwritten under them. So I think um, what's a general, general, um, what's it? That general something company, that insurance company, also in general, I think if I remember correctly, sometimes an underwriter of also in general, I believe, outsurance, a lot of insur a lot of companies that deal with insurance, short term insurance, are underwritten by Santam. That's why Sansam barely advertises because they just have so many underwritings that they just like, we're that big. So we don't need to advertise anymore. But we're not talking about Sansam, even though it's there. They also own all of these, all of them, from private wealth, Soros, Sansam Investments, Global Investments, Life Insurance, Investment Management, Pensions, UK Investment Holdings, Umbrella Pension Fund. Uh, structured solutions, private wealth, financial holdings, solutions, but you'll notice that everything here is based on long-term insurance. Everything is based on long-term insurance. Again, it's an important note. Again, for you, for you to research, so I'm just going to move to the next section. Then we're going to move to the financials, right? What I just did was just an overview um, what you'd want to do then is you'd want to go in, find out who the managers are of Sunlam, um, their credentials, how they've been doing, see their history to see if they've moved from other companies and whether they've been doing well or not. If they've been in Sunlam for over a decade or so, you want to see what they've done for Sunlam to grow Sunlam. All of those things are done and you generally do that. And I'm saying this because I know a lot of people don't do this. But you do this so that you know what the management is like. A company can fail as a good company, but with bad management. Just like a bad company with good management can also do well. So you want to understand what the management is like. So you can understand how they work and how they think. And then you can kind of see whether it works or not. Then you want to get to the financials. These are the summaries. Um, they're pretty big, 111.365 billion in market cap. They have a positive EPS. Um, this is up until now. They have a full dividend of 5.72% as of this year. They're one of the few companies that I would say are still offering a dividend of like over 5% in 2020, considering the circumstances. So that alone is amazing. And their last dividend data is of April 2020. So it's not like um, their 5% was based on last year. So they've been doing well. Even though they have been shrinking, uh, it might still appear. Even if they have been shrinking, let's say if they have been shrinking, it's okay because they've been shrinking specifically because of the situation, not because of bad management or something of that sort. So uh, let's go and have a huge trailing PE. It's massive, but let's go down. It's, it is a bit high, but let's go down. You want to also look at the fact that again, they are long term. So if you have a retirement annuity, you're going to stay with them up until you retire. It's not like you're just going to switch. You could, but the probability of switching is tiny, um, along with all the others. So generally, the, the, the customer holding, uh, the amount of energy it takes for them to keep the customer is lower. 
once they get the customer they don't have to continuously work hard to try and keep the customer which is a great business model let me just quickly pause this all right let's continue so on top of all of this um they have a positive profit margin they have a positive operating margin they have a positive return on assets they have a positive return on equity as i said i'm not a fan of south african companies but if i had to invest in in a south african company honestly sunlam would be one of them um if i was limited to purely south african companies i'd look at sunlam not necessarily out of growth but just out of stability and the idea that you know if if you can return a five percent dividend assuming that the profit assuming that the price um that there's not going to be any growth in the company then i would say is it about 20 years in about 20 years um it would have cost me zero in 20 years i'd get in dividends i would have gotten all my money back in 20 years um if there's again if there's obviously an increase in earnings which there will be over time that instantly drops your 20 down to maybe 15 years so if you're say 25 by the age of say 40 you would have received all your money back in terms of dividends um assuming that sorry from 20 to 40 you would have received all your money back in terms of dividends and if that is the case and you just put your money aside even if sunlam breaks to zero it would have cost you nothing except time so th that's the advantage um but i'll get to why i like dividends um on another video then you've got management effectiveness again it's all positive i'm just going to run through this you've got your income statements it's positive they did this quarter they did drop this quarter but again it's the situation right so if 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 they've dropped because of the situation and they've dropped 40 one percent which is massive but it also it's really just going to create a discount for you i suppose um and that's about it that's their revenue growth by the way so it's not that they've dropped 41 percent in revenue that's come in but in terms of the growth of this so it means that their revenue shrunk in a way but not that there's no money coming in okay so in other words of there's a hundred rand coming in and you grow at say 50 percent and then you don't grow at 50 and the stage it minuses to the, say 50 it means half of the money came in but again that that takes a worldwide um situation in order for that to happen but let's quickly move on um everything else is in positive the, the total cash um 79 billion their total debt is 13 billion which means they could essentially just pay it off in cash um that alone tells you that they're not going to liquidate anytime soon um if you've got enough cash to pay off all your debts just like that then yeah and again the debts are are probably going to be leveraged but again that's another story for another time then they've got an annual dividend of 5.72 percent damn i should invest on this 5.72 percent dividend um it's actually an amazing company to get into <coughs> it's got history um it is well branded um and everyone like every every it's it's built for all middle to upper middle class individuals low middle smart lower middle middle and upper middle class individuals generally jump into sunlam or some kind of long-term insurance or some type of long-term um financial company the i don't want to say working class the lowest of the lowest generally don't but again that 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 becomes a downfall at the end and the highest of the highest generally can make a better return on their own but they also do put money aside so this is essentially a company that is indirectly i suppose a need but moving on from there they've got a history of dividends um all the way back to i mean like the year 2000 and if you're looking at it again they had 15 cents in dividends in 2000 10 years later they've got a dividend of one rand. that's almost 10 times um 13 years later the dividends have 10 x all right that's 13 years later so if you're 20 if you were 20 at that time and you bought in and the dividends have gone up to 165 i mean you've 10x the dividends from what you originally had 
and now they three dollar thirty four that's what that's more than ten x that's i think thirty x yeah thirty x to dividends so if anything you can expect dividends to grow over time and if they do then the twenty years I was talking about is going to be cut right assuming that no other um massive surprise comes through again. If you want to invest in in, in a company, I would say Sunlam is is a good investment. Then the total revenue, and again, um, it's dropped right in the past twelve months. It took uh, the situation to drop the revenue. Otherwise, it wasn't really doing too badly. It had jumped around. The total expenses are pretty much controlled, um, and nothing really out of the ordinary. Yeah, nothing really that's just going to strike a nerve or make you think that there's anything wrong with this company right again they are literally the biggest insurance country insurance company i believe they said in africa not south africa in africa so if you're buying into this ah uh, in a way it's kind of like saying you're buying into the equivalent of let's say jp morgan um in fact i'm gonna jump into this actually but um you would be jumping into the equivalent of say a massive bank massive well-managed american bank so um we looking at this i might jump into this um the total assets have been growing the total liabilities have also been growing and unfortunately the equity has been jumping around but again they are still relatively safe um, the more I'm speaking about this, the more I'm enticed to actually buy into this company as well. It's only 50 bucks, 56 bucks a share, um, which is cool, which is great. Um, the operating cash flow is also increasing, and yeah, um, yeah, I mean, there's that's that's a great company, it is, it is, but I'm gonna stop there. Don't be surprised if I announce that I've bought it, um, anytime soon. But otherwise, don't just buy because of the article. Buy because you've done background. I haven't done the necessary background. This is just an overview of the company. Obviously, more work would be needed in order to look at whether this company makes sense. It might be a good company to buy, but it might be expensive. Um, that's just something else to look into. But otherwise, it is a great company. In fact, I'm probably going to put it on my watch list. In fact, no, I will. I'll put it on my watch list. Um, just as something to consider but great company um great financials great management they've done well so i would say that if you are invest if you want to invest in a company go ahead just invest in sunlam and you'll be able to sleep at night you're not going to double your money in a year but you also want to manage your money as if you're managing a million and you wouldn't take a million put into a penny stock um where you could double it <laughs> you could you could a thousand exits you could you could multiply by a hundred in a year so you could take a million make it into a hundred million but you could also take a million turn into zero so i would prefer to just keep it in a way where i'm just like i can sleep at night and i'll just keep depositing money as it grows and i'll slow down i won't have a problem but i know that 20 30 40 years from now i'll still be safe the other thing about south africans again i'm, I'm selling this company i need to buy into it but the other thing about South Africans is we don't like jump, jumping into trends which will be of assistance. We like jumping into pointless trends, the dance, the songs, and all that. But into disruptive things, no. So even if another company were to come along, they'd have to fight Sanlam, which would be enormous. They'd have to come up with something different, like better rates or lower charges kind of like what rain's been doing and um, what um the other banks been doing i forgot the name of that bank is um i don't even have that card anyway um the one that mbisan apparently owns so they would have to come up with something like that where your charges are much lower for the same return or you can offer better returns but then you've got loyalty from everyone else and you've got again the retirements so you're still saying for the next 30 years i'm good then you've got your pension so now you've got corporations that you send them as their pensions as their brokers so again it's a great company to jump into 
I'm probably going to jump into this company now that I look at it more carefully, but I do need to do a bit more research into it. But I will say, if I do jump into Sanam, I also will tell everyone once I've jumped in. This is not me selling Sanam, this is me being sold by Sanam. But um, anyway, if this has been useful, um, click the thumbs up, subscribe, share, and leave a comment. Cheers.